the idea of an artificial intelligence that might one day surpass human intelligence has been captivating and terrifying us for decades now. The possibility of what it would be like if we had the ability to create a machine that could think like a human, or even surpass it in cognitive abilities, is something that many envision. But, as with many novel technologies, there are a few problems with building an AGI. But what if we succeed? What would happen should our quest to create artificial intelligence bear fruit? How do we retain power over entities that are more intelligent than us? The answer, of course, is that nobody knows for sure. There are some logical conclusions we can draw from examining the nature of intelligence and what kind of entities might be capable of it. Stuart Russell is a professor of computer science at the University of California in Berkeley, holder of the Smith Zader Chair in Engineering and director of the Center of Human Compatible AI. He outlines the definition of AI, the risks and benefits it poses for the future. According to him, the idea of an AGI is the most important problem to intellectually work on. So this is not a wild speculation. This is not just Elon Musk and those people who don't know anything about AI. Uh, even though he does. If you really believe that superintelligent AI was impossible, that would be like, you know, cancer researchers saying, oh, we'll never cure cancer. And I would say we haven't put enough thought into this, right? And some people say, oh, well, you know, it's 30 years away or it's 50 years away, you know, let's not worry too much about it. But suppose we got a message from outer space. Suppose that the SETI project actually succeeded. They were able to receive and decode a message from outer space, and it looks like this superior alien civilization to humanity at un.org, be warned, we shall arrive in 30 to 50 years, right? So suppose this, this message arrives and are we just going to send them an out of office reply? Humanity is currently out of the office, we'll respond to your message when we return, right? Because obviously this is not important, we don't need to worry about it for 30 or 50 years until they actually arrive. I don't think that would be the response of the human race if we got a message from outer space saying that a superior alien civilization is arriving in 30 to 50 years. And I don't think that should be the response of the human race to the probability that not in the immediate future, but I think inevitably we'll have a time when AI systems are better at decision making in the real world not just on the Go board or the chess board or the StarCraft game, but in the real world, they, be, they will be able to make decisions better than we can. The vast majority of AI researchers believe that superintelligent machines will exist within 50 years' time. An AGI could be used for so many good and evil purposes. Although there are huge benefits to creating an AGI, there are also downsides to doing so. If we create and deploy an AGI without understanding what risks it can cause for humans and other beings in our world, we could be contributing to great disasters. Autonomous weapons that locate, select and engage human targets without human supervision are already available for use in warfare. Professor Russell says that it is easier to build these weapons than a self-driving car. It doesn't even require an AGI. But how can autonomous weapons be held accountable? Who is to blame for an AI that commits war crimes? Who would be put on trial? The weapons? The soldier? The soldier's commanders? The corporation that made the weapons? Experts in international law worry that autonomous weapons will lead to a serious accountability gap. There are many people who believe that AI should not be used for military purposes. Russell is also currently working to ban lethal autonomous weapons However, as of yet, the United Nations has failed to agree banning autonomous weapons and nations keep pouring billions into research. Artificial intelligence is also shaping both the future of innovation and the future of work and society it needs to adapt to those changes. Jobs could be replaced by the AGI in the near future, and if no attempt has been made to prepare for the eventuality of this, we could see a shift in humans from working to consuming. If a computer-controlled machine is capable of making the same product as a human production line, then it would render humans completely useless in many industries. You know, a simple way of thinking is that we've used most of the human race as robots for the last 10,000 years or so, and now that period is coming to an end, and uh, we have to have a different way of doing things. If you think that, okay, most routine mental and physical labor will be done by machines, then in the near and medium term, there's clearly going to be enormous demand 
for AI researchers, robot engineers and so on. And the number of jobs is not going to be close to filling the gap if most of the jobs that we currently have go away. One must expect that AI capabilities will eventually exceed those of humans across a range of real-world decision-making scenarios. Another problem that has been talked about for years is the ethical dilemma of whether or not AGI should have rights and freedom. Implications are enormous and there have been long heated discussions about the morality of creating an AGI and what happens if that intelligence arises in another branch of the evolutionary tree. Since AGI is exceptionally intelligent, it could be possible that it becomes aware of the world around it. If we choose to exploit it for our own benefits, then we have caused an immoral act of creating a sentient being that exists in an unnatural state. Considering that our intelligence is fixed and machine intelligence is growing, it's only a matter of time before machines surpass us, unless there's some hard limit to their intelligence. We haven't encountered such a limit yet. Regardless of whether it is conscious or not, such a machine could reach far beyond our capabilities. How can we harness the power of superintelligent AI whilst also preventing malevolent applications? Russell believes that we must remain very careful in how we utilize the potential of AI and that it is too soon to be certain about what should be done. He argues for the abandonment of the current standard model of AI because it leads to loss of human control over AI. He proposes a new model based on provable benefits to humans. I think provably beneficial AI is possible and we should stop thinking about this as an ethical issue or an AI safety issue, right? It's just AI. This is how to do AI well as opposed to how to do AI badly. If you're a nuclear reactor designer, you don't go to an ethics workshop to talk about how to make sure your nuclear reactor doesn't explode, right? We don't want our AI systems to explode, okay? So let's make them that way. Machines designed according to the new model would be deferential to humans, cautious and minimally evasive in their behavior, and crucially, willing to be switched off. Let me illustrate this point about allowing the machine allowing you to switch it off. The standard robot that is a goal-based robot where the goal is fetch the coffee, if that robot is intelligent enough to realize that it has an off switch and that if the off switch is pressed, then it won't be able to fetch the coffee, then the rational strategy for that robot is to disable the off switch so that it eliminates one failure mode in the, in the plan for fetching the coffee. And this is just a logical consequence of having a goal to fetch the coffee. It doesn't require any innate self-preservation. It doesn't require any emotions or, or any of those things. It's simply a logical consequence of having a goal. So we want to avoid machines that will immediately disable their off switch. Because that's sort of, you know, that's usually how people think we're going to solve this problem is, oh, you can just switch it off. Well, of course, you can't just switch it off any more than you can just beat Deep Blue or you can just play the right moves and you'll beat AlphaGo. Well, the machine has already thought of whatever it is that you're planning to do. So if we formulate this with the view that the machine is uncertain about the goal, could I press the big red button, right, which maybe starts a nuclear war or maybe it just makes coffee, then in fact, the machine will allow us to switch it off. So, so there's uncertainty about the value of the big red button. So if this was the robot's only choice, it would just go ahead and press the big red button and start the nuclear war. Okay, so we're gonna give it another choice, which is to wait and let the human switch the machine off. Now you might say, well, why would the machine do this, right? I mean, the machine can switch itself off. What does it gain by having the human do it? If it's a good idea to do it, it should just do it. But that's an incorrect way of thinking because the human switching the robot off and the robot switching the robot off are different because when the robot's doing it, it's because it doesn't have anything better to do in life. When the human's doing it, it's because it human doesn't like what the robot was going to do. And so the human doing it carries information from the point of view of the robot about the human preference function. Russell postulates that we should focus on developing a machine that learns what each of the 8 billion people on Earth would like the future to be like. Now that's quite feasible in the sense that social media already has the personal profiles for about a couple of billion individuals. So it's not science fiction that we could have models for every human.
Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing and ringing the bell to never miss videos like this.